Hi everyone, my name is Max Maker and I'm building an electric hydrofoil, which is a motorized surfboard with a wing underwater. In this video I'm showing you how I'm building the board itself. I designed the shape in Fusion 360 and it will all be cut on my CNC. You could do this by hand of course, but since I have the CNC, I might as well use it. Everything is cut in layers of foam, because I couldn't cut that deep in one go. First I cut the top, then the bottom and at the end the middle from two sides. So let's start shaping the blank. I used the longest cutters that I could find and I ran them as fast and as deep as my CNC allowed. The foam is so easy to cut that the machine doesn't really notice. I was most worried that the dust would go everywhere, but the dust collection did an excellent job and it contained all the dust within the CNC. After the basic shape was cut, I switched over to a ball nose bit and cut the round contours. The CNC does a lot of overlapping passes and forms a really smooth finish. I'm checking the fit of the waterproof camera box, because at this point I could still make some adjustments. So the top shape is done, time for the bottom. I had to cut this in three layers, because my CNC just doesn't reach that deep. The board is 140mm high, so the drill bit has to stick out a little bit more than that, so 145mm. And that means that the Z stage would have to be roughly 30cm long, and it's just too much for my CNC. These channels on the other side will be for aluminium profiles to take the load of the mast. The CNC left behind a little bit of a rough surface, but that can easily be sanded out. I could have let the CNC paths overlap more, but that would have added a lot of time to the cutting process and I was already at 2 hours. Time to cut the middle! It was freezing cold in my workshop. The route is moving at 2 meters per minute, 16 millimeters depth of cut and 100% step over. I made sure the router cut into the wasteboard, so this would give me a mark when I flipped the part over to align it again. And here I ran into a real problem. The CNC lost its position. It knows its location from counting the steps it took in the X, Y and Z direction from the initial startup of the machine. So I printed this little plug on my 3D printer that I could put into the foam and use it as a reference point, because I knew the exact X, Y and Z location of that point. Problem fixed! I'm so glad I've got this cyclone dust collector, because without it, my workshop would be an absolute mess. <laughs> when planning out this project, I actually thought the biggest problem was the dust collection, not the cutting of the blanks. The CNC even gave me nice fillets for the fiberglass to stick to. You can find a link to the epoxy that I used in the instructable in the video description. My buddy Pocket83 gave me the idea to build a steering stick for the epoxy and this really saved a lot of time. Sometimes you really urgently need another batch of epoxy and this helps a lot. Keeps the stress down then. These holes in the back are for screws to mount the mast to the board. Meanwhile my cats were playing in the snow. I didn't want to keep this from you. The orbital sander did a really good job of sanding the blank smooth, but it also left behind a few holes in the foam. Because instead of sanding, sometimes it just rips out chunks of the foam. It seemed like an endless loop of filling and smoothing and filling and smoothing, because with every smoothing I would create some more holes. You just gotta stop at some point. I really wasn't sure how strong the fiberglass would be, or how many layers I would need. So just to be on the safe side, I decided to put aluminium profiles into the bottom of this. So the mast would be directly mounted to these, and it would spread out the load over a much bigger area. Somehow the channels weren't deep enough, I don't know what happened there, but I just cut them out with a router. And I put this little wooden plug inside the aluminium, so I couldn't crush it with the bolts. Because, you know, sometimes you over tighten them, and if these profiles would break, that wouldn't be good. And I also didn't want water to be able to go in there, because uh, if there was a crack somewhere, these could fill up with quite a lot of water and add a lot of weight, and just issues getting it out again. I also attached this uh, LED strip to it, and I made sure everything is really secured, because these will be glassed over with fiberglass, so if they don't work, there's no way of fixing this. 
It would have been very difficult to get fiberglass into these holes for the bolts. So I took this plastic conduit and I gave it a little chamfer and I could insert them into these holes so the foam is protected and then later on add fiberglass to have it overlap onto the conduit. I glued on some washers because if they move around during the fiberglassing process there's no way for me to fix this. You only get one shot at this and if anything goes wrong the blank is pretty much ruined. The most important tip for the laminating process that I can give you is be prepared. Cut everything to size beforehand, have gloves ready and have a lot of plastic on the floor because it really gets messy. Epoxy will pretty much go everywhere so just protect everything with plastic and you're good to go. So the layup strategy was one layer at the bottom, one around the aluminium profiles, then another one on top just for the mast mount and then two more layers on the entire bottom that go all the way around the rails to the top surface and at the top I had two layers in total. At this point I realized that my vacuum bag was too short. It was meant to keep everything tightly pressed together so I had to improvise and I wrapped a ton of cling film around it to apply pressure and I even added a plank of wood on top of the rails and then I wrapped rubber tubing around it to increase the pressure even more. To keep the glass down inside the cable channel, I sprayed some conduit with mold release and put that into the channel. I weighted everything with a few bottles and that worked pretty well. Did I mention that it was messy? The top was a little bit easier. You just have to make sure that the fiberglass always has contact with the foam. You cannot have any air bubbles underneath, because later on when you're sanding, you're going to sand through these bubbles, which creates holes, which have to be filled and then sanded again, and that's just an endless cycle. I mix pink dye into the epoxy to give me and you a little bit more of contrast between the layers. This all will be painted anyway afterwards. This was another problem. Do you see the bubbles underneath the logo? I needed to push out the air, so I took the data from the CAD model and made this mold that I could push into the cavity. I did the same for the screw holes in the back. The finish wasn't that great though, so for the drainage holes underneath the electronics compartment I inserted balloons and blew them up with the compressor. That's a bit unconventional I guess. And that gave a really smooth finish. But there was still a lot of sanding to be done. Once everything was smooth, I could apply the hot coat. This is a term solely used for surfboard making, I think, and it's just another layer of epoxy that fills the texture of the fiberglass. It gives you some material to sand everything smooth afterwards. I used a hot air gun to get rid of the bubbles. I was very optimistic here, I thought this could be the final layer, but what was supposed to be the final sanding revealed a lot of holes and areas where the fiberglass didn't stick to the foam. And this logo didn't come out very well either. So I mixed epoxy with micro bubbles, which is just a very lightweight filler material, and then I patched everything up. I added some fiberglass to this, so it gives it a little bit more strength. 
And then there was a lot of sanding. I think this is what I spent most of my time on on this project. I went through about 50 sheets of sandpaper. I needed some strong mounting points for the electronic box. If you want to know what's going inside it, you can check out the introduction video I made with all the electrical components that I'm going to use. I drilled holes inside the electronics compartment and then I cut some pieces of 10mm aluminium to length. They were then drilled and tapped, so later on I can attach screws that will hold down some webbing. At first I thought I would use rivets, but I was afraid that the force acting on them could crack the fiberglass. I think this is a much neater way and I can remove the screws to replace the webbing if that should be necessary. Once the epoxy was hardened, I could sand them down to make the flusher with the wall. And then I applied some more epoxy. This was an endless loop of applying epoxy and sanding it smooth again. But at some point, I really got close to a nice smooth finish. These dripping edges here can be removed once the epoxy is slightly tacky. Can you see these marks that the finger is leaving behind? This is called an amine blush and you can remove it with hot water and a little bit of soap. But it's really important before you put on the paint. And this stuff can come out for weeks, so I actually let this dry for a month or so before I apply the paint. So this really is the final sanding of the gloss coat. This will remove any streaks from the brushes and then it's ready for paint. I used a cat software to try out color combinations and I decided to go for black, white, gold and bronze. Initially I wanted to go for bronze and a lighter bronze, but it turned out I couldn't get that color in a spray can. And these spray cans were crazy, there was so much volume coming out of them, I think they're made to paint trains really really quickly. And this is the moment that I realized I painted over the LED strips. So I sanded it off again and then I applied some masking tape. I was really surprised by the quality of the paint. I ordered these in the store and they were much cheaper than the stuff from the hardware store and the paint got everywhere. Look at the floor, it was covered in gold. I didn't aim at the floor and there was a lot of masking involved with this. And look at this white, it really covers all the colors that are underneath. And this is really rewarding, you know, pulling off the tape and seeing that everything was good. I just wasn't so happy with the front so I redid it. This is a combination of black, gold and a little bit of bronze to get just the right color that I wanted. And you can see it's really a combination of three different colors, gold, black and bronze. So I'm really happy with the paint now. Let's just check if the LEDs are still working, because if not, I really can't fix them. Oh yeah. I'm not sure if they're going to be bright enough. I guess we'll see soon. So now the only thing left to do is attach the wing with these M8 screws. And I designed these holes just big enough so the socket wrench could go in there. So there we go. This looks much better than I expected it while I was making it, because back then it was just a mess of epoxy and fiberglass and a lot of holes in it, but the paint really pulled this together. As you can see, the weather is not quite right for testing yet, but there's still a lot of work to do anyway. I still have to design, build and attach the motor pod, which is the real challenge, I think. And of course, it has to be all waterproof. So stay tuned for that and obviously if you subscribe you're not going to miss out on the future videos which are going to come out very soon. And if you're one of my Patreon supporters your name will be engraved into this board. So as always let me know what you think about this build and put it in the comments below. And thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing and thanks for your tips and tricks. My name is Max Maker and I make all kinds of stuff.